Hello and welcome to Adepticos Online. We're looking at module three, planning of the overall learning journey of how to lead. And we're looking at step two, strategy. So why does strategy matter for leaders? It's something that's thrown around so much. We need to have a better strategy. We need to be more strategic. But what does this word actually mean and why is it so important? Well, the reason why strategy is so important is it describes the path to victory. If there's no clear strategy, then there's no clear way in which the team or the organization will be able to achieve success. So that's why strategy matters, because without it, people won't understand how they're going to achieve the goals. And we can see this in football. An effective team has a great strategy that it understands and executes well in order to achieve victory on the pitch. But we can see that there's strategy at multiple levels. There's a strategy for the team when they actually play the game. But there's also the greatest strategy of the football team in terms of how they coordinate their financial resources, how they organize their fans, so on and so forth. So it's important to recognize that a leader needs to uh, marshal multiple strategies in order to achieve the overall goals. And in order to understand the deeper concepts of strategy, I think there's a great quote here from Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland which on the surface is a simple child story, but is well recognized as a, as a vehicle through which very important concepts can be explored. So, for example, this famous quote says the following. One day Alice came to a fork in the road and saw a Cheshire cat in a tree. Which road do I take? she asked the cat. Where do you want to go? was his response. I don't know, Alice answered. Then, said the cat, it doesn't matter. And what this very simple quote says is that if you don't have a clear understanding of where you want to go, then it doesn't matter where you are and it doesn't matter what you're doing. Only by having a clear path and a clear goal does it matter where you're going. And in the same way for a leader, if you don't know where you're going, if you don't know where you're leading your team and you don't understand how you're going to get your team to achieve the victory, then it doesn't matter what you're doing because you're not going anywhere that's important. So the first step is to be clear about where you're leading your team and how you're going to lead your team to be successful. Now that we understand the basic concept of strategy, we can understand Sun, Sun Tzu's quote. So this famous military quote says the following, Know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories. What he is saying here is that there are two fundamental elements to strategy. One is that you must understand yourself. You must know your strengths and your weaknesses. On the other hand, you have to know the situation that you're in and the opponent that you're facing. And success comes from maximizing your strengths in the situation to overcome the opponent. In other words, by knowing yourself completely and by knowing your opponent completely, you will never be defeated. And so that's what you're really striving for when you're formulating strategy. You're trying to understand yourself and what your strengths are and avoid your weaknesses and you're trying to apply those strengths in such a way that you can exploit the weaknesses or the opportunities of the situation that you're facing. But in order to be an effective leader, we can see where the relevance of the third quote comes in. So Michael Porter is one of the most famous and well-recognized business professors, and most famously created Porter's Five Forces Strategy, which is a way of creating strategy which is taught across the world. And what he says is that effective, teacher, uh, effective CEOs or effective leaders, we can say, are teachers and what they teach is strategy. In other words, it's not just the leader who needs to be effective at strategy, but the whole team that needs to understand what strategy is and how to formulate it. Because by doing that, the whole team will understand the path to success and be able to cooperate effectively in building an effective strategy to achieve success. So what happens when you build an effective strategy? Well, a superior strategy leads to superior results. And here we can see, perhaps for me, one of the greatest contrasts that describes the 21st century that we live in. So on the top, we have a picture of Shanghai, or a large city in China, in 1990. And below, we see the same city almost taken from almost exactly the same position 22 years later. And what a difference it is. Shanghai has become one of the fastest growing economic hubs in the world. And this picture of the Pudong district summarizes what China has managed to achieve over the last few decades. They have found a way to create an effective strategy that has accelerated the country's development and uplifted millions, if not hundreds of millions of people out of poverty 
and to achieve economic development and progress. It's worth recognizing that China's successful development is possible because it has pursued an effective strategy in enabling it to unlock its success. It's worth recognizing that previous attempts of China to develop itself and move forward, such as the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, were not nearly as successful, to put it mildly. And so this is why leadership matters, because by building the right strategy, you can achieve incredible results. So what do you need to know about strategy? The first is that the strategy is the, the vehicle for transforming the vision into reality. It clearly describes how today's reality will be converted into tomorrow's vision. Secondly, strategy is a very, very simple concept. It's hard to do, but it's simple to understand. There are three things that form strategy. An understanding of what the current situation is, where we are now. An understanding of where we want to go, what our goal is. And third, an understanding of how we're going to get there. In other words, strategy combined creates a coherent, unified, and clear plan of action of transforming today's reality into tomorrow's vision. So a strategy is, in essence, a sophisticated plan. So what we should first do is focus on what is a plan. A plan combines these five questions in front of you. I'm not going to read them out because it's very boring to read out PowerPoint slides all the time. So you can see them for yourselves. But what you can see is it's important to integrate these five questions into one coherent plan. And so a good plan is able to understand, explain who is doing what, where and when, why they're doing it, and how they're going to achieve it. And yes, I do realize I just read out that PowerPoint slide, but uh, sometimes you can't help it. So if you look at this slide, we can understand how these three basic elements of strategy interact. The leader needs to understand what the goal is, what are, we what are we working towards achieving? And then they need to understand at the same time, what is the current situation? And then they need to combine those two understandings of the present and the future to work out an effective way of how we will get there. And being strategic basically means performing these three uh, tasks continuously. So when someone says, we need to be more strategic, what they're actually saying is, we need to have a much clearer understanding of where we're actually trying to go we need to have a much clearer understanding of where we are now, and we need to have a much better understanding of how we're going to get to achieve our goals. So, good bit of information there for you. So in summary, why does strategy matter? Strategy describes how you will succeed. It describes the path to victory. Having a great strategy enables you to coordinate your limited resources effectively in order to achieve your goals. And a crucial part of strategy is to make sure that you use your organization or your team's strengths to exploit the weaknesses or the opportunities in the environment or in your opponents to achieve victory. So how do we actually do it? How do we formulate that superior strategy? Because you know, we've talked about this concept of asking where we are now, where we're going to go, and how we're going to get there. So we have here from Adepikos a simple six-step um, methodology for creating a superior strategy. The first task is to define where do we actually want to go. And that's where you can use a great model called the SMART goals. Okay, and SMART stands for specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. So the first task is to describe what are we working towards achieving. And that should be described in a manner that's specific, in a way that you can measure uh, pursuit of the goal. It's actionable. In other words, that means you can assign that task to someone to be responsible for. It's realistic, as in those goals can actually be achieved. And they're time-bound. And that means that they, there's a specific time frame in which those goals should be achieved, rather than just saying, yeah, just, you know, when you've got time, make it happen, because those things never actually get done. So once you understand what you're trying to achieve, we next need to understand what the current situation is. And that's where you can perform something called a SWOT analysis. And that stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So what you need to analyze is, first of all, what are the current strengths of the team? And what are our current weaknesses? So strengths and weaknesses is focused on the present reality. And then you need to ask yourself, what are the opportunities and what are the threats that could emerge in the future? And so that's where you need to think about how your team can exploit those opportunities and prepare and avoid the threats that future situations might create. Then, by doing this, we have a clear understanding of where we want to go and what the current situation is. And we need to start working towards building an understanding of how we can actually get there. 
Now, before we charge into building a plan, we need to actually spend a bit of time imagining how the future might unfold. Because it's all well and good building a great plan, but if, this, if the reality changes in a way that we haven't expected, then our plan is going to be useless. So that's why scenario planning is very important. And what I suggest is four simple scenarios to consider. First of all, what's the worst thing that could happen in the future? If we imagine, for example, that we are building a company that's trying to build a new smartphone. We've done, we've, you know, we've defined our goals. We want to build this new smartphone in the next 18 months. And we've analyzed the situation and recognized that we've got great, great uh, strengths in building really designer phones. And there's a great opportunity in the market to build such a phone. But we first of all need to be a bit more cautious and see how can the world change. So the worst situation could be, for example, that there's a massive financial crisis again, and that there's no interest in people buying smartphones because they want to save their money. On the other hand, the best situation might be that the economy really takes off and that there's more demand for smartphones than ever before. And then the third scenario you want to think about is out of those two extremes, what do you think is a realistic middle way in which you can actually anticipate what the future would be? So this is what would, for example, would be saying, well, there'll be some parts in the world where there's going to be growth, where there's going to be some other parts of the world where nothing is happening and the economy is shrinking. And then finally, there's the crazy outlier. And the crazy outlier is that idea of something so radically coming in that no one has thought about that could completely change the entire game. And the reason that's important is that in our modern world, with things changing so quickly and so rapidly, the crazy outliers are no longer so crazy anymore because whole industries can be transformed within 18 months or two years. So, for example, one crazy outlier that I'm pretty sure will happen, certainly within our lifetimes, but perhaps not in the next few years immediately, would be what happens when people start to implant their mobile phones. If you think about it, why do you carry a mobile phone around in your hand? Wouldn't it be much simpler to install a device in your brain or somewhere in your body to perform all those tasks for you? The technology is there in principle. It just requires someone who's crazy enough to put it all together. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the right way forward or the best way forward, but I am saying that it's something that is not only possible, but could also actually happen. And if you're a mobile phone company and you're busy making physical phones, when, you're, when the next big thing turns out to be implanting chips in people's brains, then you need to be ready for that. And so thinking about crazy outliers is a healthy way of anticipating how this modern world might change. So you've defined the goals, you've analyzed the situation, you've got a good grip on what you think the future might look like through your scenario planning. Now you need to start putting the plan together. And that's where you combine the, combine the elements of what do we need to do? How are we going to pursue those goals? Why are we perceiving those goals? Who's going to do what? And when and where are these different actions and activities going to take place? By coordinating all those different questions of what, how, why, who, when and where, you'll be able to build an overall plan. And that leads us to the final stage, review. And in the review, it's important to look at what are the assumptions that you've made in your strategy and what have you, what have you omitted, what have you not considered. Then we come to the final point, describe the path to victory. And this, in essence, is very straightforward. You need to be able to describe your strategy on a one-page piece of paper in a simple pit diagram or a few key sentences. If it takes you multiple pages to describe your strategy, it's too complex, and not only will you be able to, will you struggle to communicate it, but more importantly, everyone else will struggle to understand it. So even though it might be brilliant, if it's not simple and clear, then it's very unlikely to be implemented effectively. So you need to go back to stage four to create a clearer and simpler plan. Eventually, by moving between stages four and five, you'll get to a point where you can clearly describe the path to victory. And you'll reach a point where you and your people can all say, in all honesty, we believe that this is going to lead us to success. If you can't honestly say, we believe this is going to lead us to success, then you need to go back to the drawing board and try again. There is no point rushing ahead simply to get things done if it's going to become a complete mess and you're going to fail. Set yourself up for success and start with a clear and effective strategy and then go out there and make it happen, rather than just rushing into things if you don't even believe it's going to work. So that leads us to the final stage, communicate the plan. Once you and your team believe that you've got the right strategy in place and you really believe it's going to lead to success, then tell the people about it. Explain the strategy clearly, explain it effectively, and explain it rapidly. 
There's no point creating a great strategy and waiting six months to tell everyone about it because by then it's already going to be out of date. So get it out there amongst the people. And that's why we can see it's so important to have a clear plan because if it's clear, it's going to be easy to understand and rapid to communicate. So let's look at two great examples of using effective strategy to build the path to victory. In 1941, Nazi Germany invaded Soviet Union with 4 million men, 600,000 motor vehicles, 750,000 horses on a battlefront that was 2,900 kilometers long or 1,800 miles long if you're imperially minded. The size of this invasion was longer than the distance from New York to Houston in Texas. This was the largest invasion in human history. Called Operation Barbarossa, the German troops had initial stunning success against the Soviet forces. The Soviets chose to one strategy, retreat. They pulled back from the invincible German armies and moved all their equipment behind the Ural Mountains. Now at first, it seemed that all was lost, but the Soviet high command knew that they needed to play to their strengths in order to achieve victory. They knew that come winter, the German supply chains would be dangerously overstretched and that the Germans had little experience of fighting in the bitterly cold Russian winter, where temperatures often stretched deep into the minuses. And so when winter came, the Soviets launched their, their counterattack and managed to fight the Germans to a stalemate at the crucial battlegrounds of Leningrad and Stalingrad. Eventually, by leveraging their industrial capacity, superior numbers and understanding of the Russian landscape, the Russians were able to halt the German advance and transform it into a German retreat. By relying on understanding their strengths of knowing their country, knowing their country's weather and biding their time to build their forces, the Soviets were able to beat the greatest challenge that they ever faced. On the other hand, we have another great example of strategy in Toyota. When Toyota first decided to build cars and take on the American manufacturers, they were laughed at. What could the Japanese possibly teach the Americans? But it turns out they could teach them quite a lot. The Japanese, and Toyota in particular, pioneered something called lean manufacturing, which enabled them to make more cars, cheaper, and at a much higher quality than their American counterparts. So good, in fact, that the Japanese were able to make cars and ship them to America and sell them for less money and at a higher quality than the Americans could produce for themselves in the United States. This superior manufacturing advantage and the strategy of focusing on building superior manufacturing capability enabled Toyota eventually to become the world's largest car manufacturer, turning the game on the Americans. So these are two great examples of showing how two organizations faced with what seemed like overwhelming challenges, using the right strategy and patience, were able to transform the situation to overall victory. And this takes us to what some practical, practical tips are for strategy. The first is you have to keep it simple. Even though the details of the Soviet and Toyota case are immense, the basic principles were the same. The Soviet Russia, retreat and bide our time to write for the right moment to strike. Toyota, we will build the best manufacturing base possible in order to outproduce our American counterparts. Both of these two examples match the strengths to the situation they faced. As Sun Tzu said, know yourself, know your enemy, and you will never be defeated. And in the same way, you need to understand what the strengths are of your organization and how you can match those strengths to exploit the weaknesses and opportunities that you encounter. And then finally, you and your leadership team must believe in the path to victory. It's no good simply talking about the strategy. You actually have to believe and see very clearly how you will achieve your success. And that is the only way you'll be able to inspire the people around you to follow you and work with you to achieve the victory that you seek. So in summary, strategy is a very simple concept that can be understood by anyone. It's a simple activity of comparing where we are today, where we want to go tomorrow, and how we're going to get there. But in order to do that, you have to live strategy. There's no point just creating a document and then filing it away in a drawer somewhere, never referring to it again. It has to be an everyday activity. By integrating strategy into your day-to-day -day and building superior strategy, you'll be able to build an unassailable path to victory and ensure the success of your team and of your organization. Mm -hmm.